The purpose of the next section is to teach you how to create an unsolicited transaction. When finished, you should be able to take a usable protocol and handle all unsolicited responses sent to the server by the device, and lastly, evaluate the response. In particular, you will learn about transforming the project into unsolicited mode and setting transaction key values. There are a few additions to the creation of the project when working with a device that sends unsolicited data. When going through the channel creation wizard, make sure to check the box next to unsolicited mode. The receive timeout is simply the amount of time the driver should wait for the full unsolicited message to come in. The dead time is necessary so that the driver may resynchronize itself with the device after receiving a message with an unknown key. If a message is unrecognizable, the driver will not know where the message ends and the next one begins. The way the driver handles the situation is to let the entire unrecognized message come in and then wait for the some period of time. This dead time must be such that it is safe to assume that the next byte received is the beginning of another message. The key length is just what the name implies. It tells the driver how many characters to use as transaction keys. These characters must be the first characters in a message. The log unsolicited message timeout setting can be useful for diagnosing communication problems. When checked, a message is placed in the event log each time the receive timeout period expires while receiving an unsolicited message. For our example, we will accept the default timeout and dead time settings and set the transaction key links to three. We know that the first three bytes of every scanner will be unique from looking at our device protocol. The only additional setting in the device creation wizard is the unsolicited message wait time. This parameter specifies the amount of time that the device will wait for unsolicited message before the unsolicited packet received on time system tag is set to 1. This system tag, which is displayed by the client application, indicates whether an unsolicited message has been received for a given device within the amount of time specified. After creating your channel and device, you can launch the transaction editor from the device properties. In the sample protocol, you will notice that all the data is sent in one transaction. We will create a tag block to handle that transaction. We named this one Scanner1. When you expand the tag block, you will see the unsolicited transaction underneath it. Click on the transaction properties icon to open its property dialog box. The unsolicited transaction properties are used to set the transaction key characters for each unsolicited transaction that is created in the device. In our case, we know from our protocol document that the transaction we are being sent starts with an STX followed by two hex ASCII bytes for the device ID. For example, device one will have hex two, hex 30, hex 31 at the beginning of each packet. Select each ASCII character and add it to the key character list in the sequence they will appear in the packet. Click OK to finish. Now we will add tags for the data items to the block. We know what to add from the protocol document. First, add a tag for the quantity as before. Again, we will be using a comma delimiter. Next, we will add the remaining tags as we did before. In unsolicited mode, we have a new tag we need to add. Because OPC clients rely on a data change event to receive updates, we need a way to let the client know that a new item was scanned that may have the same data as the last item. To do this, we have the ability to create an update counter for the tag block. The counter has a value range of 0 to 65,535. When the counter reaches that maximum value, the value will roll back to 0. The only purpose of this tag is this as an indicator. Add a tag for the counter. We call it our data update count. Now that the tags are created and the transaction key is sent, we can start adding the unsolicited transaction steps. First, select unsolicited in the transaction editor. Add a read response command that is waiting for the end of transaction character, which we know from our protocol is ETX. Next, add a test character command. We are testing for a negative acknowledgement in position byte 4 in the read buffer. If the test evaluates as true, we will go to the label no data error. If the test evaluates as false, we will continue because we know that we got data. Next, we will add the processing for data handling. To begin, we will add a C character command to find the delimiter that is at the beginning of the data. As you may recall, the seek command moves the buffer pointer to the byte location of the character that is being searched for. If the seek fails, we will go to a seek error label. Once we find the delimiter, we will move the buffer pointer to the byte immediately following the delimiter. Now the pointer is at the first piece of data, which is the quantity. We will do an update tag of the quantity tag from the current buffer pointer. 
we will then continue this process for the remaining tags. When updating the data update count tag, notice that the source is the event counter. The Yukon driver will maintain a counter for every transaction that we use in the project. Next, we enter an in command so that the transaction stops processing and does not fall through the error handling section of the transaction. Now we start the error handling area by adding the first label, which will be the no data error label from our first test character. Next, we will test the error code that was received with a negative acknowledgement. If the test evaluates true, we know from the protocol that the error code means that the scanner was empty and we will go to the no data good label. If the test is false, we will continue. We know from the protocol that the status can have a value range of 0 to 7. We will do a test for each of these. From the protocol document, we know that status codes 0 and 1 are good no data conditions. Status codes 2 to 7 are bad no data conditions. So the true results will be sent to a label named no data bad. If all the tests fail, then we will end the transaction. We could also have opted to post a message in the event log or perform some other action. Next, we will add the seek error label. We will post a message to the event log when this happens. Then we will end the transaction. Again, we are ending the transaction so that we do not fall through to the next section. Next, add the no data good label. For these errors, we simply update the status tag with the status value. We then end the transaction so that we do not fall through to the next section. Next, add the no data bad label. For these errors, we update the status tag with the status value and we post a message to the event log indicating that the scanner is in an error state. We finally end the transaction so that we do not fall through to the next section. You should now have a basic understanding of how to process unsolicited data. The full diagram below illustrates the steps in our transaction view. Once the transactions have been entered, you can close the transaction editor and save the changes. When the transaction editor closes, the tag database is automatically regenerated if you chose to save the changes that you made.